<laughs> Jamie, can you please come and place our emergency UVC? Corey, can you please prepare uh, emergency epinephrine? What weight will we estimate for the baby? We are estimating that he's three kilograms. We will demonstrate here the 3x3 three three method for placing emergency UVCs. This has three steps with three things to know in each step. The need for vascular access and resuscitation medications is rare in neonatal resuscitation. However, when intravascular access is required, the umbilical vein is a rapidly accessible direct intravenous route. This is not a sterile procedure. Step 1. Gather the three supplies you will need. Number 1. The UVC tray. Number 2. The umbilical catheter. And number 3. Normal saline flush. The UVC tray has all the equipment you need to place the umbilical catheter. Specifically, it has a scalpel, a stopcock, an umbilical tie, and betadine or another antiseptic. The UVC catheter in this situation is for emergency use, so a single lumen should be chosen to reduce preparation time. The catheter sizes can be either 3.5 French or 5 French. The sterile normal saline can be gathered in 10 mil pre-filled syringes. Next, there are three steps to prepare the umbilical catheter. One, attach a three-way stopcock found in the UVC tray to the catheter. Two, attach the normal saline flush to the stopcock. And three, flush the catheter. You are now ready to prepare the baby and place the catheter. There are three steps to prepare the baby. One, clean the cord with betadine or other antiseptic. Two, tie the cord with the umbilical tie. Briefly pause compressions and caution the team that a scalpel is entering the field. Then three, cut the umbilical cord with a scalpel below the umbilical cord clamp to about one to two centimeters above the skin. The umbilical vein is the larger thin-walled structure. Insert the catheter in this vein two to four centimeters while gently aspirating back until you get free flow of blood. Hold the catheter securely in place. As a quick review, there are three steps and three things to know for each step. Gather the three supplies, the UVC tray, the umbilical catheter, and the normal saline flush. Prepare the catheter. Attach the stopcock. Attach the flush. Flush the catheter. Prepare the infant. Clean the cord. Tie the cord. Cut the cord. If umbilical access is not possible, an alternate route for intravascular access is an intraosseous needle. Identify the insertion site on the flat surface of the tibia, approximately 2 cm below the tuberosity and 1 to 2 cm medial. Clean the site with antiseptic. Hold the IO drill perpendicular to the skin. Pull the trigger while holding downward pressure. Secure the needle. Connect the infusion set and flush 3 to 5 mLs of sterile saline to open the bone marrow space. This can now be used as any other IV access site. I have the UVC in with free flow of blood. I'm going to secure it. Okay, Corey, can you go ahead and give our recommended NRP starting IV dose of 0.2 mLs per kilo of epinephrine? We're estimating that this baby weighs 3 kilograms, so that will be 0.6 MLs. To have the 0.6 ml dose pulled up in a 1 cc syringe, which is the recommended starting dose of 0.2 mils per kilo. Okay, Jamie, don't forget to follow the epinephrine with uh, 3 mls of flush volume, please. 0.6 mls epi followed by a 3 cc flush of saline completed. Okay, we will check the heart rate at one minute, which will be at about 9 minutes and 30 seconds on the timer to assess the response to epinephrine. A team member should prepare epinephrine doses as soon as a UVC is being considered. Start by popping the tops, then connect the vial. Place the fluid dispensing connector between the epinephrine and the syringe you will use to draw up the dose. Draw up IV doses of epinephrine into a 1 cc syringe. And any ET tube doses should be drawn up in 3 to 5 cc syringes. The recommended starting dose for IV epinephrine is 0.2 ml per kilogram you may want to additionally prepare a higher 0.3 ml per kilogram dose. I can't tell on the monitor if our heart rate is improved with compressions and epinephrine, so let's go ahead and pause and continue ventilations while we reassess the heart rate. Okay, so the ECG leads are saying that the heart rate is above 100. I'm gonna go ahead and confirm with auscultation. Okay, I hear audible beats and the pulse os is picking up, so that electrical activity on the monitor is representing functional heartbeats and not pulseless electrical activity. 
Suzanne, can we go ahead and start wean the oxygen as able to our target saturation goals? Weaning the oxygen. Okay, good work team. Let's go ahead and get this baby um, ready to transfer to the NICU. I'll go update mom and we can also um, debrief upstairs once we get the baby settled.